Welcome to Savannah, Georgia, one of the most beautiful cities in the American South and in the United States as a whole. The city is filled with history and maintains a special Southern charm that makes it a premier destination. The city's impeccable uniqueness has made Savannah grow into a top tourism destination in the U.S. So what are the best things to do and see in this amazingly gorgeous city? Greetings from Savannah, Georgia. So today, guys, we are in the beautiful and historic Savannah, Georgia. So as you can see all around me, the city is known for its beautiful squares and its huge, amazing, old live oak trees. And then between this, there are tons of historical and architectural beauties littered throughout the whole city. So what we're gonna do on this tour is we're gonna go through the historic district of Savannah. I'm gonna show you the best things that you should do while you're here in Savannah, the best things that you should see while you're here. So let's start. Savannah is the oldest city in Georgia, established in 1733 as a port city of the original British colony. The city remained a prominent and successful port during both the Revolutionary and Civil Wars. The city attracted some of the richest families in the colonies and the American South, and that is evident in the attractive architecture that can be viewed throughout the entire city. Where we are now is Chippewa Square. Now this is one of many squares that are littered throughout Savannah and basically it's a central park within the neighborhood. And it's interesting to note because Savannah is America's first city plan community, right? So it was built around these beautiful parks right in the center. But what's so famous about this particular one is this is the site of where Forrest Gump in the movie told his famous story. So if you remember in the movie, he's on like a bench in a park and he tells the story and it goes into it and it flashes back to him at the park and then back to his story. This is where it happened. So, it's a beautiful square. I highly recommend you check out this square and the many squares that are throughout Savannah. Each one has its own unique flair for the particular blocks that it serves. So, take a look at that when you're here. The next place I recommend you check out is the home behind me. This is the Owens Thomas House. So this beautiful mansion was designed by an architect from England and is one of the earliest examples of historic architecture here in Savannah and is one of Savannah's most architecturally significant pieces. Um, we're gonna go inside of it, so we're gonna take a look and see how they lived back then. But one of the most interesting things about this home is that it has one of the best preserved slave quarters known in the United States and in the American South. So we're gonna kind of take a look at that and see how the slaves lived alongside uh, their owners here at this mansion. So let's head in. When you first begin your guided tour of the Owens Thomas House, you will first see the slaves' quarters. This building served as the place where the family's slaves and horses lived, known as the carriage house. Notice the vivid blue paint on the ceiling. This original blue paint is called haint blue and was often used in African cultures to deter ghosts or other malevolent spirits. The second floor of the slave quarters offers you a look into the living quarters and conditions of the people that lived in this home. It is believed that anywhere between 14 and 30 slaves lived in this structure. Next, the tour continues into the home. 
built in 1819. The first room is the main bedroom. The home was designed by famous architect William J. of Bath, England. Savannah attorney and politician George Welshman Owens purchased the property in 1830, where it stayed in the family for almost a century before being donated as a museum by Owens' granddaughter in 1951. The home is known as one of the nation's finest examples of English Regency architecture and was one of the first buildings in Savannah equipped for indoor plumbing. The home has many quirky design features like false doors, a room that has an optical illusion dome, and even a bridge in the second floor corridor. So one thing I have to say, when you're here in Savannah, you really want to walk through the city, right? So they have trolleys and you know, that works if it's difficult for you to walk and all that stuff. But the city is extremely walkable and most of the sites that you want to see are walking distance, just a couple minutes. And when you walk, you really get to fully experience the city. You know, you get to walk next to the historic home, see the beautiful trees all around you. Um, so I definitely suggest you do that when you're here instead of, you know, taking the trolley tour, or taking a cab or anything like that. The next place you should take a look at is Colonial Park Cemetery, located just one block south of the Owens Thomas House. This historic cemetery has graves from as early as the mid 18th century and is the final resting place of several historically notable Savannah residents. Alright, the next place you want to check out when you're here in Savannah is St. John the Baptist Cathedral. So this is one of the most beautiful cathedrals in Georgia, in the American South, and in the United States. Um, it was built by an early Catholic community here in Georgia, and inside is just amazingly beautiful, ornate. It has amazing stained glass windows, and it really is inspiring. So, let's head in. The Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist is the mother church of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Savannah. The impressive church built in 1876 is one of the most beautiful Catholic cathedrals in Georgia and in the U.S. The original colonial charter of Savannah prohibited Roman Catholics from settling in the city in fear that they would ally with nearby Spanish Florida due to their large Catholic presence right to the south instead of Protestant England. Shortly after the American Revolution, however, this ban was lifted and a small congregation of early Catholics formed a parish at this site. This cathedral was built several decades later to accommodate a growing Catholic community, and its outstanding architecture, stained glass windows, and attractive statues make it a truly inspiring place to pray and attend Mass. The Savannah Historic District and its 22 historic squares make up one of the largest national historic landmark districts in the United States. The district largely maintains the original town plans of early city planner James Oglethorpe and is known as the Oglethorpe Plan. Savannah is often considered the first formally planned city designed in the United States. Its architecturally attractive homes, quaint and narrow tree-lined pedestrian-friendly streets, and public green spaces serving sectional blocks still serve as the cornerstone of effective city planning principles today. Okay, the next place I recommend you check out is behind me, the Old Sorrel Weed House. Now, this is interesting because this is considered one of the most haunted mansions 
in Savannah. A lot of them say they're haunted, but this is definitely considered one of the most haunted and paranormal investigators come here all the time to investigate this property. It has a dark past, so that's kind of what instigates the paranormal activity that you'll see here. Um, the owner's son was one of the youngest generals on the Confederate side of the Civil War, and the the house's history is very interesting. You can go in, you can take a tour. Uh, we're not gonna go inside for this tour because uh, just for the sake of time, but it's interesting to see the house and see how they live, similar to the last one we saw. Um, but I encourage you, if you're interested in the paranormal, to take a look at the ghost tour that is at night. You can do the house tour in the daytime or the ghost tour at night, whatever tickles your fancy. The Sorrel Weed House was completed in 1835 and offers daily tours of the home as well as ghost tours in the evening hours. It is the boyhood home of one of the youngest generals in the Civil War, Moxley Sorrel, who fought on the Confederate side. Robert E. Lee visited the home on two occasions in the 1860s as he was close acquaintances with Moxley's father, Francis. The owner's wife committed suicide in the home in the 1860s involving a love affair between her husband and a mistress. The home is considered one of the most active paranormal sites in the United States. As you continue on your tour of Savannah, notice the incredible Victorian era architecture lined against the squares and between the large live oaks with dramatic Spanish moss. If you are interested in architecture and history, check out the Savannah Visitor Center or look online to book a tour to learn a more in-depth history of the fascinating properties throughout the historic district. Now, another interesting thing to note when you're walking around the streets of Savannah is that it, all the businesses are not located on one main commercial corridor like so many cities are, but they're kind of dispersed throughout, right? So you go into the square, you turn one block, you'll see a coffee shop or a restaurant or a bar. Um, you'll see that throughout. So what's cool about it is you could just kind of explore and run into things. You don't have to be limited to one commercial corridor. So keep that in mind. I can encourage you to just walk around and just see everything you can and just pop into whatever suits you. next place you want to check out is Forsyth Park. That's where I am now. Now this park is located right in the center of the historical district and it's just surrounded by palatial mansions. It's very beautiful. Um, there are tons of old trees like you've seen through this whole tour and there's a fountain in the center. And the park is a very important piece of Savannah heritage. Forsyth Park was developed from the 1840s to 1850s to provide a large preserved green space for Savannah residents as the city's population continued to grow. Though the several squares between the blocks offer solace for people in the city, Forsyth Park provides an 18-acre huge green space. The two most famous landmarks are the Central Fountain and the Civil War Memorial. The Civil War Memorial has encountered vandalism and controversy in recent years because it is dedicated to the Confederate side of the Civil War. 
The park is characterized by the traditional dramatic foliage of savanna, but also offers the visitor wide open green spaces, playgrounds, and athletic fields. So do you guys want to see an authentic historical plantation? Well, that's where we're going next. So we're still in the historic district, but where we're going to head now to is Wormslow Historic Park. So what this is basically is an old maintained plantation and it's just beautiful and it's considered one of the most photographed and Instagrammable places in Savannah and in the American South. So we're going to head there now. It's not in the location. I took a cab. I just took an Uber. Um, it's about 15, 20 minutes away, but I hear it's well worth it. So let's check it out. Okay guys, so we have arrived. We are here at Wormslow Plantation. So it was about a 20 minute drive from historic Savannah. So it really wasn't bad. Um, I took an Uber here. It may be a little easier to drive because I found out when I got here, you have to walk down. Probably has, to, probably has to be a half a mile down to see everything, right? So it's a little easier through the car because you could kind of park and then see the trails. Now what's interesting about Wormslow is it has a huge history, right? So the beginnings of Wormslow start in the early 18th century. So it has been a plantation here for centuries, right? Now what's so amazing about Wormslow is it's beautiful. Foliage. I mean, you have these amazing live oaks with the Spanish moss, and it really is inspiring. Um, a lot of people come here for their weddings, for engagements, things like that. Um, another thing to note is you could spend the entire day here, right? So there are tons of hiking trails, and you can kind of explore the whole island. And it's, it's a very large island, and it really would take all day to fully explore the whole thing. Um, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through here. I'm going to show you some of the amazing amazing scenery through here and we're gonna learn a little bit a little bit about the history of the site. Wormslow Plantation consists of 822 acres and was developed in the 1730s. Within the plantation you can see the place where the main plantation house used to be. Though it is now in ruins, it helps you to understand where the house was relative to the other features on the property. The original owner, Noble Jones, acquired the 500-acre property in the 1730s. In the early days of the plantation, there were walls protecting the site to fortify against Spain, who had territory in this region, and Native American populations. Georgia's original charter banned the practice of slavery for several years, and during this time Jones used indentured servitude to work the land. In 1749, however, the slavery ban was revoked and Jones used slave labor to make Wormslow profitable. Jones tried to profit from several crops, but interestingly, the plantation was never profitable. You can see some of the slaves' quarters on the site to better understand how the people who worked the land lived. Now, when you're here at Wormslow, there are several hiking trails that you can go on. There's one called the Battery Trail that is three miles long. So if you really are an avid hiker and you want to really get into the depths of the plantation, take that one. And there's also some smaller ones. And along them, there's living history uh, little exhibits there, right? And sometimes they have people in, you know, historical costumes explaining what things are. So if you're interested in knowing the history, and it's particularly for good for kids, um, I encourage you to visit those. And another thing is uh, I encourage you to bring your dog because there's saw lots of dogs here on the trails and um, they'll really like it. So consider that when you come here. So this is the main thing you wanna see when you're here at Warm Flow. This is Oak Avenue. So you can see above me, there are just amazingly beautiful live oaks with Spanish moss coming down them. I mean, it's truly something out of like a movie. It really is something amazing to see. 
Um, like I mentioned before, I took a cab here and it's about a mile long. I mean, it amazes me that back in the day, people had this much land just to themselves. I mean, they had lots of slaves working it and they had their whole family on it, but I mean, acres and acres. And it, it took me a while to walk down here because like I said, it's almost a mile long, just these beautiful oaks. Um, this is the one site that people go to for like the engagement photos people have weddings here um it really is something truly beautiful to see and something you definitely have to put on your bucket list in life Okay, now we have just returned from Wormsville Plantation. Now we are back in Savannah. So it's about a 20 minute cab ride, real easy. So where we are now is we are on the historic riverfront or River Street. So this is just north of the historic district and downtown Savannah. So it's really it's walking distance, it's real close. And down here, you're gonna find amazing restaurants, bars, stores, things like that. So it's really a great place to walk along the water. And you have beautiful views of the river. It really is something to see. River Street is a famous commercial corridor along the riverfront in Savannah. Today, River Street mostly serves as a recreational dining and nightlife location. Most of the properties along River Street are from the late 18th and early 19th centuries and originally served as industrial warehouses. Interestingly, this was also the location of several slave markets and many of the restaurants or bars that you may visit were originally holding cells for enslaved Africans. During most of the later half of the 20th century, the location was in ruins, but the city invested tons of money and resources to revitalize the riverfront in recent decades. It is now a lively, inviting, and entertaining pedestrian promenade. So as you can see, River Street is filled with restaurants, bars, and stores. And one thing that's really cool about it is you can take your drink with you and just walk down the whole River Street, right? So it is not illegal to drink in public here. I don't know if it's illegal or not, but either way, it's not enforced. So, you know, it has a cool vibe. It has a real nightlife vibe, right? So you can just walk down here, drink, have a good time, look at the river, go to the different bars and restaurants. It's definitely something cool to see when you're here in Savannah. River Street is known as a prime location for drinking and each bar has its own specific feel and crowd. Stop into the one that piques your interest or go on a crawl. In recent years, it has earned a reputation as a top bachelor and bachelorette party location. It is also a later crowd with things really getting going after about 10 p.m. Well, there you have it guys that was savannah so i had an amazing time showing it i hope you guys enjoyed it um it's such an amazing city because it blends the historical and with the modern and the people are super friendly and it's very walkable and manageable to see everything and everything's pretty compact um you know the beauty of savannah is not going to be justified by this video you really have to see it in person um if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. And um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like this video, share this video, and let me know your tips on uh, navigating Savannah. Until next time, guys, take care.